Hello ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for staying with TV3. This is special news coming in, a breaking news story from the seat of government. And the news is that Ghana has a new acting Inspector General of Police. And the statement that just came in from the office of the president reads, and I'm going to quote it verbatim, what specifically that statement is saying. And it says, um, President Akufuado appoints Mr. James Opong Buenu as Acting Inspector General of Police. The President of the Republic, Nana Adudankwa Ekufuado, on Monday, the 22nd of July, 2019, directed the Inspector General of Police, Mr. David Asanti Epietu, to proceed on leave with immediate effect, pending his retirement from the Ghana Police Service on Wednesday, the 14th of August, 2019. The president thanked him for his many years of service to the country and wished him well in his retirement. It also goes on to say that President Akufuado has asked the Deputy Inspector General of Police, Mr. James Opongwenu, to act as IGP until a substantive IGP is appointed in accordance with the Constitution. That's a statement coming from the seat of government, and it is signed by Eugene Ahin, who is the Director of Communications. And um, it, it, it follows speculations in the media and in, in public discourse about who the next IGP would be. Uh, lots of names have been bandied about, and um, it was actually a surprise to many following social media commentary after the statement was released that many were not expecting um, Mr. James Opong Bueno. He is going to be the acting IGP. Let's go to the phone lines now and speak to Emmanuel Kuting. He's a security um, analyst and uh, has been following developments within the Ghana Police Service for some time now. Mr. Kuting, good afternoon and thank you for joining us. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Um, is, is this name a surprise to you as it is to those who have already started commenting on it on social media? Well, it's not a surprise to me at all. But the curiosity has to do with the wording of the letter from the presidency directing the IGP to proceed on leave. Right. Given that we are all aware, he has had to the 3rd of August to go on his mandatory leave pending retirement. Mm. So the coming days will kind of unravel the reason behind the directives. But some of us are not quite surprised at all. Probably he might, uh, he might have told the presidency or he might have asked to go on early retirement given that they are served and his time was even extended. We can never know. At the moment, we can only speculate. Mm. But I'm not sure there is anything on toward. But the wording from the president, if you read the letter, is quite suspicious. And in the coming days, we interrogate it very well and see the reason behind the early directive. I, I'm just going to pick some portions of that statement and then you can point out which part of it you know you know is uh, is, is curious as you're as you're saying it says um the president has asked the current igp david asantepe to, to proceed on leave with immediate effect pending his retirement um, from the police service on Wednesday, the 14th of August. And then if you come further down, it says uh, the president has asked the deputy IGP, James Opombwini, to act in his stead. Which part of it is, you know, um, raises those red flags for you that make you think that it is a surprise wording from the presidency? You know, in standard practice, if you have been sacking somebody, you direct the person to proceed on leave. You understand. But we are aware that this time was due, and if you read many of the intelligence we pick up, we were supposed to commence on that leave on the 3rd of August. So right. many of us were watching to see that happen. But for the president to take the immediate uh, step a week or two to that early time, that is why I say it's curious and it's suspect. Mm. So in the coming days, we can know the real reason to the extent that they have directed someone to act in his stead, which is standard practice as well. Why the question the agency, why we couldn't wait for the few days he has got left on his term to expire, yeah. to get see through his term and directing him to 
um, go on retirement. But let me be quick to add this, my brother. I will ask the president, his excellency, to honor the good people of Ghana, the women of this country, and make sure that in consultation in appointing the next IGP, he should stand his ground and make sure we elevate a woman to the position. Because we've never had a woman IGP in this country. And if you look at the current crop of commissioners we have, we have only two women. Mm. And it, I think it is about time we empower and encourage our women, especially the young ones that are growing up, to take active interest in security as a career. So if we don't encourage those at the top to hold positions at the top, how are we ever going to encourage our younger ones to come? The excuse has always been that women don't aspire to, uh, uh, to the level of commissioner side that they can be appointed. How many times can we have our women commissioners competing with the dominant male counterpart? I think Ghana cannot wait to have our next IGP being a woman. And the president must honor the good people of this country and women for that matter. Right, Mr. Kuting, um, information we've also gathered indicate that um, the, uh, the current IGP um, who is retiring in the next few days, is going to be handing over to Mr. Opombwen, who is actually 60 years and turned 60 in October 2018. That is last year. First of all, is an issue of age in appointing a new IGP, does it come up at all? And while you, while you answer that, what also do you make of the fact that um, there are those who are saying that the, the president should start looking at younger folk who are in, or younger uh, commissioners of police who can be elevated to the position of IGP? If you look at public policy management, age must always be a factor. The phenomenon of we appointing IGPs who have a year or two to go on the retirement is not helping the police as an administration. More often than not, they are not able to plan and give the service long-term development agenda for the service. That is why we are having the current crisis we are having within the service, where you realize that we don't have properly trained police personnel, their welfare are not taken care of. And you agree with me that in public policy management, any time you have leadership changes, frequent leadership changes, it doesn't trickle down with the policies that is on the ground for such an institution. Mm. That is why some of us are looking uh, 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 that the president should do the, uh, uh, the honorable thing and don't allow this person to act for a longer term. You agree with me that they only renew his term of one year uh, and uh, it's a standard practice that has happened over the period. But I think it's, it's about time we stop that thing and give opportunity to the younger ones that are coming so that they can have more years on their tenure when they are appointed to do, uh, those high positions that they can deliver. Look right. at this. So he just came about two years is going. The, right. the, the, the issue of policies being nurtured cannot happen within two years. Right. We need longevity, at least four years or over. Then mm. the police service can actually see the benefits of such policies. You will agree with me that Apetu came with a, a, a good policy, but now he's going. I don't know if the next IGP will continue with such a policy. Mm. You know the transformation agenda he brought that we are, we are currently working on. That is precisely some of the things we are talking and looking at. So okay. government should inspire confidence in the system Look at somebody who still has age on, uh, on, on his or her side. Mm. And now we wish if a lady is appointed the next IGP so that we can give meaning to policies that we are uh, uh, as far as for the service. Okay. As it stands now, that is the order from the office of the president, which is that he's going to be acting IGP. Now, who is um, the current deputy um, IGP, Mr. Opon Bueno. Do we know him, what he brings to the table? If you read a brief profile of uh, the 
current acting IGP is somebody who has professional touch, no doubt about that. And when uh, 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 his retirement age came and they gave him the one-year extension, some of us sought to ask why. And we were given details, the professional touch and experience he has, and why he should be retained to impact such experiences to the service. So I think that Mr. Opo, in no or certain terms, uh, I'm not saying is not cut or fit for the job. He's overqualified for the job. But like I mentioned, we need longevity in the leadership of the police as an institution. That is why one year is not enough for him to be able to bring in a, 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 a policy meaningfully to bear on the service. But if you look at the current action IDP, I tell you, many of the seven officers will tell you he's a, a, a very affable man, very approachable, and he's very down to earth. I have had personal interaction with him only two weeks ago. Okay. And I, I was kind of amazed. And I'm mm. not sure anybody will have an issue with me acting as, a, uh, uh, acting as an IGP. As an IGP. Thank you very much, Mr. Emmanuel Kuting, a security analyst. They're helping us um, try to understand the latest statement coming from the seat of government, which has announced James Opongwenu as the acting IGP, and that is going to be with immediate effect. And the president has also ordered the current IGP, that is um, uh, Mr. Asante Pietu, to proceed on leave with immediate effect as well and in the coming days we would interrogate further what this means what he brings to to the table and how the police service is going to be the beneficiary out of the new acting igp stay with tv3 there is more to come my name is martin esiedudate